we go up there and press buttons? Yes. How much pre-preparation and thought and musical planning am I putting into the hour that I'm playing? Days worth. I think there's just this really big misconception of what DJs actually do. They're business owners. Before you, you dropped out, you had this kind of offer from BlackRock sitting there. You know, it was my dream to, to get that internship. Did you tell them that? Yeah, it was so, it was so funny. I, I will never forget the phone call. I will never forget it. I, I think I said, you know, you're never going to believe this, but I, 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 I'm not going to be able to, to do it with you. I'm not going to be able to work with you guys this summer. And then I was like, well, why? You know, asking inclusively, like asking if there was any other firms that I was talking to. I was like, well, actually, like, I'm, I'm kind of like, making dance music. And then at the end, the, the conversation ended with him asking for my website and like one, actually like genuinely curious to see like what I was, what I was working on. I was always playing piano, I play guitar and I sing. I was actually making folk music before I was making dance music. Was it any good? And I, I'd like to think it was. just written so many piano pieces in my lifetime that I've slowly converted to dance music over time. So this was one of them, and this was the first song I ever released. Yeah. There were multiple movements and lots of different developments, and I took the best part of it, you know, one 16-bar loop, and made it into dance music. You have an interesting story. You lived here for 11 years now. Mm -hmm. But what was it like growing up here? When did you move here? I first moved here when I was 13. At the time, you know, I really wasn't listening to dance music at all. I knew about the club scene. I knew about, you know, obviously the party scene on the strip. But we were pretty far removed from it as kids growing up in Vegas. And that's been a wild thing to experience firsthand growing up as a kid, then becoming 21 and like starting to DJ around the time that I turned 21, finally I'm able to go in the clubs and check it out. And then all of a sudden I'm actually playing in the clubs. You're not partying, but you somehow you get involved in music. My inspiration for making dance music, a lot of people ask all the time if it came from Vegas. It actually came from a trip to Sweden. Seeing the dance music culture out there was eye-opening. And when I returned to the US, I immediately wanted to pick it up. Most kids in the US hadn't experienced dance music before the same way I had. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had a little bit of a first mover advantage starting DJing and having this unique experience from abroad. Mm -hmm. So I would take all the acapellas and all the voices from pop music that people recognized and I'd mix them with the dance music they didn't know. So I'd make dance music more familiar to college kids. And that's kind of how I grew my fan base initially. So at what point did you say like, holy crap, I can actually make a living off of this? I started playing shows in college for 100 bucks, 200 bucks, sorority formals, sports teams formals. And all of a sudden, things kind of blew up on the internet. And I was like, this is insane. Like I'm making over any salary that I could be making over college in a period of six months. This is crazy. My professor, Glenn McDonald, my economics professor, helped convince my parents, you know, this kid has a once in a lifetime opportunity that he's got to take. So you were showing him your business numbers kind of thing? and you were Yeah, I was giving him an estimate of what I was making and you know, he loved the music and he got it and he kind of saw more broadly like that this was not a dying trend, this was a very new trend. The second I moved home from school that summer, that's when I decided that I wasn't going to go back. That's when I started playing in Vegas. Vegas first gig in Vegas was I got paid $500 on my 21st birthday to play Bon Bar in Cosmopolitan. A couple months later I was playing Marquee. And it was that fast. So you were getting uh, paid 500 at Bon, bon Bar and what were, fees were in the... Fees were between, yeah. I mean, to, to disclose, I think that at, at Marquee it was, I started around five grand and then kind of worked my way to, from seven to ten. Yeah, um, so not bad. Not bad at all for a 21 year old kid. So most of the stuff I'm releasing is not necessarily what I love or what I want to make, it's just kind of what's working. Mm -hmm. And all the future stuff that we have right now is like, that's why I'm really, really pumped. That's why, you know, we're starting to work with Erica because it's all like so different. It's like the first time that I'm actually proud of what I make. Mm -hmm. and I, I can't even say that about some of the stuff that I've come out 
Tell You Love Me was my biggest. It was number one on dance radio last year, but I'm still like not 100% proud of it. Why, why is that? Because I just think, I'm, I think I can do more unique things than yeah. that. It's pretty generic. Yeah. Even though it's a great song, it's still generic. Okay. Um, and so like for me, it's always about doing like more unique things. When I'm alone, I will always think of you. As if I don't feel the cut of your world. 